Hi everyone, I'm Erica from Remote Worker, a UK job board for remote working professionals. Today I'm joined by Maria Svensson Wiklander from Sweden, one of the founders of Remote Lab, a knowledge and development platform for individuals and companies who wish to learn more about remote work. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Erika. It's a pleasure to be joining you. Thank you. So I would like to ask a few questions about what Remote Lab is and can provide for individuals and businesses, how leaders and managers can best prepare their employees for remote work and to further understand how the industry has changed and how remote work is becoming the new norm. So Mariah, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself and what Remote Lab is and how come you started Remote Lab? Yeah, definitely, I can do that. Well, yeah, my name is Maria Svensson-Veklan and I'm born basically in the north of Sweden or in, actually in the geographical middle of Sweden, but it's considered to be in the north. And um, I moved from here when I was 16. It was basically nothing to do here by then. And then I moved back because of lifestyle. And uh, at the time when I moved back, I was running a, di a digital firm or a digital agency. And we were already in 2009 working remotely. Uh, so it was quite easy for us to basically make the decision that in order to be the best uh, employer for our employees, we would also allow them to live the life that they chose to live, which also means being able to choose where to live and work from. So uh, I ran that company for 10 years and was as a CEO and one of the founders sitting in uh, Östersund and I had my employees in all over Sweden and also in the, the US for from time to time. And we had our customers uh, in Sweden and also abroad. And many of those I have never ever met in uh, like a physical meeting. So it was very interesting. And we were kind of the four or, or in Sweden was not that common to work completely remote. Mm -hmm. So we were one of the companies that did that. And when we went out to our customers, we started to see that our internal communication were so much better than the customers that were sitting in the same office. Because even if you are sitting next to someone, you might not be able to, to know why they are absent this day or why they are not present and what they're doing if you don't have a like structured internal communication. So that was one of the insights that basically led us to develop more knowledge around remote work and also pretty much formulating the way that we worked and that we used internal communication and also built a company in order to, to be able to, to run it fully remote. So we started doing, uh, or I and, and some of our my colleagues started to doing like uh, consultancy, uh, um, uh, advisory things for other companies and leaderships and, and boards. And we also did a lot of writing and articles and interviews and stuff like that regarding remote work. And in 2017, I, when we started, me and, and four other uh, people, we started this co-working place in uh, Östersund. And uh, two years after that, we sold off our uh, digital firm. It's not the same people who <laughs> run these organizations. But anyhow, when we uh, founded this co-working place, it became pretty clear to us that a lot of our customers and community members were actually remote workers and that they had found a place for them to basically be able to to have colleagues, but that were not working in the same company as they were. Uh, but we had a community and we did things together as well. Uh, so they weren't that lonely anymore. And uh, about 60 to 70% of the community members that we had in our, or that we have in our community or in our co-working hub, they are remote workers. And we can also see that they have been in an unequal position when they have co-workers in the same company that work from the same physical location and they are basically the only they have been the only one working remotely or uh, one of few working remotely and they then miss out on information then they miss out on decision making etc so that's why we started to investigate this topic even further 
So the concept of the remote lab we have been working on for the last two and a half years and we launched the platform in August uh, 24th 2020. So a long story but <laughs> amazing amazing though thank you and what advice would you give to your team considering going remote and what's the first thing the leaders and individual managers um, can do to help their employees get ready? Well before the pandemic uh, experts or uh, frequently uh, participating community members of the the remote work community uh, they were jokingly said that if you want to make a uh, business remote first uh, really quickly and do the transformation you should uh, set the leadership or the management outside the office for three months because then they are starting to realize where the pain points are and where it really hurts and and where the organization is struggling uh, so that's basically the the thing that would be most relevant before the pandemic but during the pandemic that has actually happened people have been starting to sit outside the office so they have uh, really seen the pain points and i think that a lot of companies are today very subjective in their view of remote working because they are not realizing what the alternatives are so they're pretty much happy about the way that they are working they see that they have too much meetings or too many meetings in a day. Uh, so that's basically what their main struggle is today. But in order to kind of dig deeper into that, they need to have more uh, knowledge around alternatives. So basically the, the, the tip that I would give is to get more knowledge. What are the alternatives and how do the fully remote companies that work really, really well today, what are their best practices and how do they work? because then you can basically benchmark your own organization towards that and see how you could develop in different ways. Exactly, thank you. And what should people who aren't accustomed to remote work do to get psychologically ready for it? Thinking it could be people who are interested in starting remote work? Well, it's, it's just uh, basically the same things. Uh, so read about what it really means to work remotely and how people and companies do when they are working remotely. And also there are a lot of uh, great remote recruitment sites, uh, for, in for instance, remote workers, but also others that you could uh, for sure get into and see other companies that are uh, employing remote uh, people and all over the world and what possibilities that is and also um, when you are uh, um, applying for a new position at a, a, a firm or a business then ask about the remote policy and if it's possible to work remotely because a lot of organizations are switching now and it becomes less and less important to be in the same physical location and more important, the knowledge and and basically, yeah, uh, the person itself and what that can bring into the organization. And what more challenges do business usually struggle with when it comes to remote working? I would say that they fail to see that it's a more uh, overall question that it affects basically everything in a company. Uh, everything from vision and mission and, and how you set your goals and how you structure uh, your organization and how you do documentation, etc. So they tend to, to see the things that aren't working, for instance, meetings, and then they focus on how, okay, how can I get less meetings when they should really look at the, the holistic perspective of the company and more like dig into, okay, what do we need to change in the organization in order to be more remote friendly and to kind of transform into a more uh, remote first uh, style of working or so to say. Thank you. And what are the biggest benefits of being a remote worker and how can companies benefit from having remote workforces? Uh, well, I would say that the, <laughs> The most, the, the most important benefit for me is basically that I'm flexible and I'm uh, also uh, allowed to design my life the way I want to design it. Basically, I can choose where I want to live. And for me, that means living near the mountains, living, living near the nature. And uh, in order to, to do so, I need to have 
uh, be able to work remotely because I want to participate in a global uh, development as well. So I, I work from a global perspective and a lot with, with colleagues around the world, but then I, I live in a very local environment and uh, yeah, close to nature. So flexibility basically to choose I would say it's the best benefit or the greatest benefit. And how can com companies benefit from having remote uh, workers in their team? Well, uh, a lot of research shows that uh, remote workers are happy. Uh, they can be happier than, than if you are in the same cubicle and work nine to five, basically in the same uh, physical location. Uh, so having happier employees and also, if you do it right, they will also stay longer at your company, which then will then be less costly in order that you don't have to recruit new people all the time. And it's also a good way to get into better structure and more documentation of your company. So for a remote first startup, for instance, they need to have all the structure and documentation in place, which already from the beginning, which means then that they can scale faster. So when they reach like 25, 30 uh, people, which is normally a kind of a, a hassle for companies when they grow from a small company to a medium-sized company, it becomes kind of a hassle because you don't have the structure in place. They already have that so they can scale faster and become more productive uh, in uh, much faster. And how does working from home affect your health and what can employees do to make sure that people are staying focused, committed and happy long term? Well, I think that uh, in these days during the pandemic, people tend to mix pandemics, uh, what's specific with the pandemic with remote work because a lot of uh, people haven't worked remote, remotely before. Uh, so they see that people are working from home, they are very isolated, which then affects their mental health because they are not participating in the community in the same um, extent that they would. Uh, but that's basically not what remote work is about. The pandemic has been, in one way, been a really great uh, way to test remote work in a big scale, but also quite the lousy example because it doesn't give the flexibility. You're still tied to working from home which then means that you are socially isolated. So the social isolation is not normally what you need to have when you are a remote worker. You can sit in a co-working space and you can, for instance, sit together with other people working remotely, et cetera. Uh, so I would say that it, in, in the best of situation, it really improves the, the psychological or the mental health. Uh, and because you are flexible, you are allowed to basically design in things that you normally would be hassling with or that you have a hassle with, for instance, bringing kids to their trainings or uh, doing laundry or stuff like that, that you normally might have a hard time uh, putting together in the life puzzle. Uh, so it could be in the best of worlds, it will bring better mental health. Um, but then during the pandemic, social isolation has been uh, quite a hazard for employees to struggle with. Uh, but that's more about the pandemic than it is about remote work, mm. I would say. Mm, and, but also, but also uh, a lot of research has shown that the productivity goes up when you are working remote because you take less breaks and you take more, for instance, uh, tasks in an hour than you would normally do. Uh, and for that, there are definitely ways to work with that. For instance, a lot of remote first companies, they work with the Pomodoro technique, which means that you are working for 25 minutes or 45 minutes and then you take a break. Uh, so basically designing in breaks as well. Uh, so and, and also the thing with the meetings, the synchronized communication, which is a hassle for a lot of companies right now. Uh, switching over to more asynchronous communication would definitely allow people to be in their flow, which means that they are more productive in that flow and they are allowed to do the work that they're hired for instead of being on meetings all the time. Uh, so switching over to asynchronous work and also using uh, techniques like Pomodoro, uh, but also like uh, putting a specific place where you work in your home so you can leave work and then if you are working from home you can do your work at your desk in uh, 
uh, most preferable in an own room, but if you don't have that place, uh, a corner of your living room or, uh, or something else, and then you can leave that and you don't have to go back there. And then you can make a mental shift between your, your work life and your life life. <laughs> Definitely. And how do you personally manage your work life balance? Um, well, I run a, a, a pretty much a startup, so <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of work. Get it going, of course, <laughs> work a lot. I have been working a lot late, late, late yeah, last year uh, or the latest year. But I, uh, since I have chose to live where I do, I have a very close connection to nature and mm -hmm. where I find my own energy. So I go skiing a lot in the mountains. We just live 45 minutes from the nearest ski, uh, ski, ski resort. And then I go out in the forest uh, every day. And I really try to, to stay deconnected or disconnected during the time when I don't work. So I don't mix up because it's very easy also to kind of work all the time. And mm. also in, in the head work, like think about work all the time. Mm. But I try to really disconnect and then be out outside uh, doing training or doing skiing or doing the things that I love. And what helps you feel connected to others and counteract the potential loneliness of working remotely? I know you spoke about co-working spaces, for example. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a way to actually, it's a good way to connect with our, the others, to get, to basically choose which people you want to hang out with during the day. And also a, a good way to get other aspects of your work. For instance, we have different industries sitting in the same space. And if you ask someone in the mining field, for instance, for advice regarding <laughs> digital uh, development, you will get a completely different answer than if you uh, ask a photographer. And yeah. uh, so <laughs> you can get different aspects from that. But in my company, I, I thought it was a really good question. So I had to think about it, what, what made me connect with my coworkers. And I think that for us, it was a lot about humor, uh, mm -hmm. which then, and if I think back on the time when I, I had my digital agency, it was about, for instance, we created Slack bots that if you rolled coffee, for instance, you would get a GIF uh, saying something about coffee. It's, it was really like nonsense, but it was quite fun. And a lot of different jokes and a lot of different uh, gifs and emojis and stuff like that. So humor was a very crucial part of our building our culture and feeling connected to each other. And that's also one of the things that I value most when I think back at that time. Uh, but nowadays we have also I'm I'm head of a board head of the board in a nonprofit organization an NGO, uh, which also works remotely across Sweden. And we are doing Monday dances, for instance. Uh, so every week we do a dance together remotely, for instance. Uh, uh, and that is also a way to, for us to connect on something that's really, it's us, it's our thing. That's what we do. Uh, so things like that. And also, of course, uh, trying out new things together and having think tanks where someone shares a new idea or new uh, research that has come, come up or have dig deep, really deep into some subject that is important for everyone and share is sharing that and we can have a discussion around it or just uh, for instance creating new solutions to hypothetical issues or challenges that you can you come up with that's also a good way to connect uh, so those kind of small things that uh, really are specific for this group and specific for our company that is the most valuable thing that i can think of when it comes to connect with other people amazing thank you and where do you see the recruitment industry going over the next 12 months particularly in the remote working sector well um I think that it will change for a lot of teams. Uh, there was just a McKinsey report released uh, saying uh, that a lot of employees, they, um, they feel a lot of stress and anxiety around the, the, the issue that or the organization haven't started to communicate their view or ambition on remote work yet. They are waiting for it to see like what happens. But basically what companies need to do before everyone gets back to work again, that they have to set 
uh, their ambition or their vision or their like strategy for, okay, how are we supposed to work in our organization? Because people will start asking that more and more when they come back to work. Am I allowed to work from home uh, now? And during the pandemic, people have started to have new ways of, of living and they have adapted to remote work in a great extent. Some people have already moved. So it's important, important for them to continue working remotely, of course. Uh, so I, I think that we will see that most organizations, they need to, to make a statement around how do we view remote work? And I think that a hybrid solution will be the most common of course, uh, people working from home maybe three days a week and coming into the office, but it will also affect the way that we view the office, that we see the office. Is it a, is it a matter of uh, being social with each other or what's the function of the office going forward? So it's a lot of work to do. And I think that when you have decided on the next moves in this, like you have decided on, okay, this is our strategy for now, even if it's going to change tomorrow because of other uh, things happening, uh, it's important to kind of make that statement. Then for that, that's the point when you are starting to realize how this really will be affecting the company and you will start digging deeper into, okay, what do we need to do then? If we're going to allow our people to work three days from home, for instance, per week, how do we make sure that the hybrid setting is working and that it, this unequal situation doesn't happen where you have like people being in the same uh, physical conference room and, and other people joining on a remote setting? Uh, how can we can connect them in an equal position and set them uh, in the same basically room? Uh, so that, that's one, one way. But then I think that uh, the long-term change will be much more drastic than that. Uh, there was a, an economist called Carlota Perez. She's a British Venezuelan economist, and she held a speech at the Ella MacArthur Foundation 2018, where she talked about that we are now in the fifth industrial re revolution. And if we can look back on the previous industrial revolutions, you've seen that uh, first, you have some kind of um, uh, eruption period and then a prosperity period, and then you come to a turning point. And that's where we are now, at the turning point. And after that, we will then experience a recession and that, after that, a golden age. Uh, and you can see that pattern in every industrial revolution. And this golden age will be the sustainable golden age, hopefully. Uh, so it's very much connected to the way we look at the world, overall world and the climate crisis and everything like that. And with that golden age, a new set of lifestyle will also emerge. And we can see that starting and remote work is definitely part of that, where we can choose where we want to work from and how we want to work. And if you look at the generation, um, millennial <coughs> generation, also the generation said, uh, we also value much more flexibility, uh, much more than we value, for instance, salary. So we're definitely taking a, a, a salary cut in order to be more flexible, which also says something about the upcoming generations that will be the majority of the, the labor market going forward. So I think that companies need to change. And if they don't change, they will probably have a hard time uh, going forward. Um, so I think that new organizations will come uh, from this. Uh, it will also be a much more focus on the shared economies, for instance. There is a very interesting company called Bellico in Sweden, which is a furniture as a service company. And they have really started to bloom out this during the pandemic because people are working from home. So they need a set of uh, equipment for their home office, a desk and chair, etc. So what they do is basically uh, they're a platform for furniture uh, producers. So they ship their furniture through their platform to home offices all around the world. Uh, so that and then then they re return it when they are like uh, not employed in that company anymore or mm -hmm. or such. So it's, uh, I think that shared economy would be something that we see more of as well. 
Um, so definitely a big shift. But in the upcoming 12 months, I think that we're still in the norming phase. Like we're trying to make this a new norm and we don't really know how it will look like yet. But I think that we're moving towards more remote friendly companies and organizations. <laughs> Do remote lab have any new projects going on that you would like to share? Yeah, we definitely do. We have a uh, um, remote strategist uh, course, for instance, together with Hyper Island, which is super interesting. We have a lot of uh, uh, interest in that course and we're doing one right now and we're doing another one this uh, upcoming autumn after the summer. Uh, so, and the Hyper Island is a large um, global uh, um, course or an uh, education company that they are really, really good at facilitating and uh, designing learning experiences. Uh, so it's a good partnership that we uh, value a lot. And then we are doing constantly doing uh, reports and we are also doing, for instance, attitude scans within companies where we go to companies and see how mature they are in remote working, for instance. Uh, and then we are actually also opening our physical lab, which is kind of contradicting to the way that we work, but and yeah, we're, <laughs> we're establishing a physical lab for remote work where we will uh, have different research projects. We are working with different universities and uh, um, institutes, research institutes, institutes all over the world and in large research projects. Um, and this will be kind of the, the, the foundation or the, the base where we do that. And also together with the technical uh, companies that deliver a lot of hardware, uh, basically to figure out how can we best meet the new hybrid settings, uh, for instance, or how can we uh, make our uh, working methods better and more uh, allowing of remote work and how can we do uh, hybrid events for instance and make that experience better so that's uh, something that we're doing also now and we're launching that in the beginning of june so it's very much in in progress right now <laughs> amazing amazing and to wrap this interview up do you have any favorite quote or bit of business wisdom yes i do actually i tend to use uh, one quote a lot and that's from Richard Branson it was uh, back in 2013 when Michael Bloomberg went out to the press and stated that remote work will not be able to challenge the physical presence of uh, an employee and Richard Branson's answer to that was basically in 30 years time as technology moves forward even further people are going to look back and wonder why offices ever existed and I think that's more true now than ever. And that is not because I, I don't think that offices will like don't exist anymore after the pandemic, but I think that we will definitely evaluate the purpose of the office and see how we can utilize that more. And also uh, what is better or best done remotely and what is best done in the physical presence of of employees so for instance social the social connected connection between co-workers uh, that has not been valued as much before but i think that we will see a different view on the social connection and uh, how much uh, or how important that is basically for the work so that we use the physical room to do the right things and then we use the remote room to do other things or the individual things basically thank you very much for joining me here today maria